What are some of the solutions to the mind-body problem? There are three solutions that have been offered. One is perhaps the most commonsensical solution, dualism. The idea that we have some kind of immaterial soul and the mind is a state of that soul. If that solution is true, then the science of the mind, at least as we now see science, can't, cannot succeed. A second solution um, is what's often called functionalism, the idea that the nature of the mind is a matter of the, the role in the mental economy of mental states. The idea is to see the mind along the lines of a computer program or of a computer state, which is defined by and characterized by its relations to other similar states and to sensory inputs and behavioral outputs. A third is the one that I favor, at least for consciousness, is physicalism, the idea that you can see the mind, or at least the conscious part of the mind, um, in terms of its biological realization in the brain. Let's, uh, let's start with, uh, with dualism. Clearly, you don't favor it. I don't, because if, if dualism is right, then um, uh, the study of the mind is more in the uh, domain of religion than of science. The debate among more scientifically oriented philosophers is really a debate between functionalism and physicalism. Mm -hmm. The functionalists are the computer people. According to the functionalist idea, the biological substrate is just one of many substrates. We could make a mind out of silicon, we could make it out of carbon, but the important thing is the functional relations that are embedded in the computer description of it. The physicalist form is, says that it's the biological realization that's really important, and I think in the case of consciousness, it looks like that form is on the right track. The, all the advances that have been made in the last 20 years um, in the study of consciousness is, have been in the study of the brain, um, the conscious basis of our states. But here's my problem, that if we eliminate the possibility of anything non-physical of any kind, then what fundamentally is different about a biological substrate than any other substrate if you're going to reproduce exactly the same type of, uh, when we say computation, I mean that in the most general sense. Fundamentally, what would be the difference? Okay, look, you're raising the most difficult problem about the study of consciousness. It's the problem of how we can understand why the biological basis of a, of a given phenomenal quality is the biological basis of that quality rather than some other one or none. Um, it's that problem that makes people dualists because they don't know how to think about it. Let me give it to you. Let me say you'll find whatever you're looking for in mm -hmm. the biology. Mm -hmm. But why can't that then be reproduced in silicon or in something? Mm -hmm. Why not? The fear is that you could reproduce the, the function. And so you'd have the same system as far as the functionalist approach is concerned, but that you wouldn't reproduce the phenomenal feel of it. You'd have, you'd have made what um, some people call a zombie that is something that's functionally like us, but physically and f phenomenally different. Maybe phenomenally like nothing. But the, the question is, what is the residue? What is the residue in the biology that after you've created all the functions someplace else, what is the residue? Yeah. If it's physical, you can reproduce it over here. Right. Okay, so the two, the two different possibilities are that it's biological or that it's functional. If it's biological, maybe you could reproduce it in silicon, but maybe you couldn't. The more physical and biological the substrate turns out to be, the more likely it is that a zombie could be made. No, I'm not uh, talking about a zombie. Yeah. You know, okay. I, I think a zombie can be made. I'm talking uh -huh. about a real whole thing with yeah. all the phenomenal internal ex feeling because that's what we have to duplicate in yeah. order to make it real. If you, if you say we can't do it, what is the residue you have in your biology that's preventing you from doing it over here? The more f physical and biological the nature of consciousness is, the harder it will be to produce something that functions the way we do and isn't a zombie. The problem will be if we make a silicon version of the biology of, the, the biology of human consciousness, how will we know whether we've left out something essential? The problem is how do we know what level of description of the human biology of consciousness is essential to consciousness. And 
we do not know now whether we will find a similarity metric which will allow us to, um, uh, to tell whether uh, another kind of being of this sort really is conscious.